I am Dr. Pratap Kumar, Senior Consultant in the Department of Reproductive Medicine and Surgery, Kasturba Medical College and Kasturba Hospital, Manipal Academy of Higher Education, Manipal in Karnataka State. Today I will be talking to you all on what is infertility. As you know, if you attend 10 marriages today, at the end of one year, nine would have become pregnant. But one out of the 10 may not get a child. That means infertility is only 10%. But you can imagine the population is so large, 10% is a large number itself. And always people in the house think, daughter-in-law has the problem, and the son never has a problem. It's never so. It's always 40% of the reasons is the woman, 40% is basically the man, and 20% can be the man and the woman. It's called as combined factor. So what do we do as a practitioner helping the fertility enhancement? So we generally take the history. First of all, whether they're together. One year married life should be together, not one month in one year. It is one full year they should be together. And they should have a normal intercourse, normal life, marital life. Only then we can say everything is fine, yet you can go on. But generally what happens if the husband is in some other country, wife is in this place, they come once a year, one month only. Five years, they come only five times. That is not infertility. That means they are not stayed together well. I think that's a message everybody should know. Now, if you look at the woman first, of course, if she's having a regular menstrual cycle, as we all know, a woman releases the egg only one day in a month. That means exactly in a 28-day cycle of menstruation, menstrual cycle, exactly 14th day, middle of the cycle, the egg comes out. And the egg is actually live only for a day, maximum two days. But intercourse happens at that time. The sperm lives in the woman in the body for about two to three days. So it need not be precisely to know which day ovulation occurs. Around the 14th day, if they have probably be together, they conceive. So if the woman doesn't get the cycles regularly, every month it doesn't come, that is a problem. That problem is called as no ovulation, called as anovulation. That means she's not releasing the egg. So we as an expert will find out why she's not releasing the egg. There are many, many reasons. One of the common reasons is overweight. More than her height and weight, we calculate something called body mass index. If her height is tall, good height, and she's slim, I think that's the best. But if somebody is short and uh, fat, or a tall and fat, it's not good. So that means obesity is a problem of the reproduction itself. Hence, we reduce the weight. Now, other than that, there are very common conditions like polycystic ovaries. You know, the ovaries have little, little tiny kind of cysts there. And they produce male hormones. The fat also produces male hormone in the body. And the polycystic ovaries also produces male hormone. It's not that they produce a lot of male hormone. Just a little bit more than a woman. That spoils the egg. That is why obesity should be reduced. And she should get the right kind of weight. And we can treat the polycystic ovaries. Now, if you look at the uterus, sometimes the uterus develops some swellings called as fibroids. You know, the uterus has muscle and that muscle has a kind of a swelling and they become round, round like structures called as fibroids. Nothing to worry about that, it is not cancer. But these fibroids, if it's close to the inside part of the uterus, then again pregnancy doesn't take place. Sometimes they have heavy bleeding. That's also not a good sign. If they have a heavy bleeding during menstruation or if they bleed once in three months heavily, all that can be corrected. They're all hormonal imbalance which can be corrected. Another very common condition is they have very painful menstruation. A lot of pain during menstruation and they ignore that point. That is fibroid can cause pain. But another thing is sometimes when they menstruate, the menstrual blood goes backwards and falls in the body inside on the ovaries and that collected there. And that collection of blood over the time causes a lot of these neighboring structures to get stuck to each other. And that condition is called as endometriosis. I think endometriosis, fibroids are very, very common condition causing fertility problem. If they have that, what we do is we just remove it. We are so much technologically better now because we don't have to cut open a woman. 
We just do keyhole surgeries, laparoscopic surgeries. Sometimes there can be swelling inside the uterus. We do it telescopically, remove all those kind of things. That means a keyhole surgery is possible and just for a day or two admissions and they just go back for work the next day. Now, apart from this, you know that when a man has an intercourse, the sperms have to go inside the uterus and of course reach the egg there. So this is called as passages. The passages may be completely off track. That means there can be a block. It's like going in our big road and the roads are blocked and we have a traffic jam there. Just like that, the sperms get, don't get into the nearby area of the egg at all. So there can be a passage block. So what we do is, we do some testing called as x-rays. There are many methods. We can test the tubes. In fact, 90% of the women have normal tubes. So most of them are all right. It's just the 10% may have a problem. So in a woman, this is important to know, if she's not ovulating, Look at the reasons, maybe obesity, fat can come down, do some good dieting, good exercises. And of course, very, very common, you had heard about endocrinology talk as well. Diabetes and thyroid are a part of many people in this, in this country and the world. So we always rule out diabetes, we call it thyroid problem. You know, you have had a nice talk recently by one of my colleagues, and they also spoke about thyroid problems. Thyroid problems can cause haywire in the you know, off track of ovulation and they don't ovulate well and they also put on weight. So I think simple things like testing the thyroid, replacing thyroid problems can be easily solved. Now, sometimes what happens is tuberculosis can be there in a woman, maybe in the past also. The tuberculosis can cause TB, we say, that can also spoil the uterus. So we always feel if the woman is not menstruating properly, is a very, very scanty menstruation, then I think we will look into that as well. We'll rule out tuberculosis, but it's not common in this part of the country. Now, when you look at this age of the woman, it's very important. A woman should try for pregnancy between 25 years and 35 years of age. She has only 10 years of her lifespan. And after that, the eggs goes down in number because the woman is born with a basket of eggs. I, I'm sorry to say eggs because that's how we tell her every patient. The eggs are a layman's term, but we say oocytes in a scientific word. But I think easy to understand, a woman is born with a basket of eggs. It is not made up afterwards. It just goes away every month, every year it goes down and down and down. So by 37 years, eggs go down very, very low number. And that becomes another issue by itself. So what we tell women is that don't postpone the first pregnancy. You may have your business career, you might go on, you know, higher caliber of your position on your business, in your company. It doesn't matter because we have facility to preserve the eggs. Say 26 years, 27 years, you want to become a big manager of a, a big lord in the company there. I would suggest you come to us, we'll freeze the eggs. And that means at 28, 30 years, you have a young eggs frozen with us. You can get married later, you can have a business later on, you can become a big shot in the company. Then we'll take out these young eggs for you when you get married and try for pregnancy. So do not hesitate in coming for prior preservation of your own eggs. Now, if you go down, the number goes down, then of course the fertility goes down as well. So we find many of this pollution what happens, you know, plastics, pollution in the world. I think smoking, smoking for a woman is bad and a man is even worse. So smoking for either the man or a woman, it goes down, the gametes go down, the sperm goes down, the eggs goes down. I think just for a style, people want to smoke, but they do not realize that they are going to have harmful effect on these eggs as well. So what do we do then? The husband has to be evaluated also along with him. We just generally ask whether he's able to perform properly or not because many times sexual dysfunction is a problem in the husband. So we correct it by asking the clinical psychologists and medication, etc. But what we should know is for a husband that his sperm count is very, very important because, you know, if you look at the one ml of semen, it should contain at least 15 million sperms. That means 3 ml will contain 15 into 3. So if a man has a very low count, he may be having diabetes, he may be having so many things. That is a problem. So what we would do is we could give some medication to improve this count and it goes right in a good number of ways. Now let us see, we have done all these things and yet they are not becoming pregnant. So we have techniques because we have simpler techniques called as intrauterine insemination wherein we monitor the ovulation of the woman 
and you know we put the sperms into the uterus by some techniques called as intrauterine insemination however the sperm count must be at least 10 million per ml let us say he doesn't have that and of course the success rate is low now IUI the success rate per attempt is only around 7 to 8 percent so you can imagine we do not go beyond four times four months and if he doesn't become pregnant we do the higher technique now let us say the husband has very low count less than 5 million, he is not fit for these procedures. He is fit for another procedure called as test tube baby. In scientific way, we would say in vitro fertilization technique. When the fertilization happens in the body, it's called as in vivo fertilization. When it happens outside the body, it's called as in vitro. So it's not easy, just take a sperm and egg, put it there. It's not easy because we are all experts in that. Because what we do is we give some medication to increase the eggs. You know, as you know, a woman has only one egg released per month. We can't do techniques with one egg. We want more eggs, eight, ten eggs like that. So we give some injections. When we give injections to her over the ten days after menstruation, she will produce that number of eggs. And then under anesthesia, we remove the eggs outside and we make the husband collect the sample and we fertilize it. So when you fertilize it, it becomes an embryo. And then we transfer it to the uterus. So this is called as test tube baby procedure or IVF, in vitro fertilization. But there's sometimes the sperms are so, so very small number. Even if you put the sperm next to the egg, it's so lazy it will not get into the egg. So what we do is we have to push that egg under the microscope, push the sperm, push the sperm on into the egg by artificial technique of intracytoplasmic sperm injection called as ICSI, I-C-S-I. Okay, a man may not have sperms at, at all sometimes. There are two reasons for that. One is not producing at all. He is born with a small testis. But if he is born with a normal testis and no sperm, it can be obstruction. That means some block is there in his, in his body testis. The sperms do not come out. So we have techniques where we remove the testicular sperm and then fertilize by the ICSI, what I mentioned just now, intracytoplasmic sperm injection, and we can get pregnancies. So there are lots and lots of techniques. Now let us say the husband is very busy, he cannot come, and he gives permission for us to proceed with the wife's management. We can store his sample. So we have techniques to store the sample, and then we know we can keep it for years together, and then there is no problem at all. So we find that this sperm can be frozen, and then this can be taken out at any time after a few months or maybe years and we can still try on that. Now, this is important to know. Now, we should not delay fertility management. That's what I always advise people. Don't delay too much. Jobs are there, all problems are there, but try to come to the fertility center as much as possible. Now, you might ask me, what's the success rate in this test tube baby procedures? Nothing in life is 100%. Nobody's life is 100% safe as well. We would say around 40 to 60%. That's interesting because we cannot put a board outside my center and say 100% because embryos have to implant on its own. We cannot do some magic and make the embryo implant like natural ways, but we have techniques to get good embryos by manipulation of the hormones, manipulation by injections, and manipulation by the culture medium on the, in the laboratory side. So when we get good embryos, we get good pregnancies. Now supposing she has seven or eight embryos in that particular cycle, let us say we have failed the first time, we will try again. So you, the cumulative pregnancy rate goes up. I just wanted to tell that we will try two, three attempts and a good number of them do become pregnant. But as you know, sometimes implantation is the only thing in science not very well understood. So I would like to say that this is successful in many, but we never say 100%. We should accept both situations. So I would probably conclude by saying a man and a woman should be healthy, having a healthy lifestyle, reduce weight, don't put on weight, even for the man, should not put on too much weight because he has diabetes and thyroid problems and so on. And we will do all the evaluation. Our hospital, Kasturba Hospital, Kasturba Medical College at Manipal has all the facilities for endoscopic surgeries, keyhole surgeries. We have very good laboratory, well equipped with andrology laboratory and a very good culture medium laboratory. We have a very good cryopreservation technique. So our laboratory is completely, you know, is the swell. We have a very interesting team headed by Professor Satish Adiga, who's a professor in clinical embryology, who runs courses on embryology, which very few centers in this country can say, because, because of the techniques involved, 
we are training the junior one that means the team is pretty good so i always say if there is a very good embryologist is present then your success becomes much higher a clinician is good but ultimately the embryo has to survive and the embryology techniques are completely different which manipal can offer so ladies and gentlemen i would like to probably end by saying be safe and do not delay in getting the first pregnancy thank you very much